Going into this summer's NHL entry draft, the Flames are in need at pretty much every single position. Now, the smart thing for the Flames to do would be to draft the number one center of the future. But a recent article has shown that maybe the Flames' number one center of the future is already on the team. Welcome to Flames Digest, I'm Mark Griffith. If you're new around here and you love the Flames, make sure you subscribe because less than 20% of the people watching are subscribed. So if you want to stay up to date on all the latest news, updates, reports, and rumors revolving around the Calgary Flames, then make sure you join the fastest growing community of Flames fans on the internet. And like I said, the Flames, maybe they already have their number one center of the future. And this is huge. This really does have massive implications, serious implications for the Flames' future. If they already have their center, their number one center, then that means they need to switch up their draft process. Am I saying this is fact? No, this is coming from a different article, but it all goes around Connor Zary's position. We have seen lately that Connor Zary in this, I guess, experimental era for the Flames of this season ever since they've been knocked out of playoff contention. He has played center for the past few games, and honestly, he's looked pretty good there and could be the Flames' number one center of the future. Genuinely, this, this would be huge if the Flames commit to developing him into the number one center of the future. That being said, if the Flames with a little bit of lottery luck end up getting a very high pick, they should absolutely go all in at one of the number one players in this draft, which are essentially always at center. I mean, you're going to take Celebrini if you can get Celebrini. I love Connor Zary. He's the best Connor in the whole NHL, let alone in Alberta. Okay, that might be a bit of a stretch, but if you, if you get Celebrini, you get Celebrini. But anyway, let's get into this article. It is once again from the Calgary Herald and Wes Gilbertson. So we'll just jump a little bit into it a, a bit here. There's no doubt that the 22-year-old Zary is a big part of the Flames' future plan. The question is, where does he best fit? As a middleman or on the flank? There's really no wrong answer since there should be long-term openings at both spots. Yes, there really isn't a whole lot of forward depth in the Flames' system right now. Zary, one of the bright lights in a season that concludes with Thursday's send-off against the Sharks, was initially called up as a winger, and thanks to his composure and confidence and nose for the net, made an immediate impact on the left side. He was playing left wing for essentially this entire season. With the Flames now in experiment mode since being eliminated from playoff contention, the rookie hotshot has skated the past six games as a pivot, the position that he primarily played as an up-and-comer in Saskatoon, as a junior in Kamloops, and at the start of his pro career down in Stockton. So he's familiar with the position of center. You have a lot more responsibility as a center, especially in the defensive zone, Zary said. But overall, once you have the puck, playing in the offensive zone, nothing really changes. Neutral zone doesn't really change. It's just that little bit of defensive zone responsibility and the face-offs. It's pretty true. I mean, it's, it's m much better coming from an act actual NHL player than any of us. But really, when it comes to switching from winger to center, it's just making sure you can get those face-offs down pat and then, of course, being a little bit better in the defensive zone. You're more relied upon. Obviously, there's a couple different reads that you have to pick up on, but other than that, I've played it before, right? Not in this league, but I've played center in the American League and junior, so I understand the concept around center. So it's not really anything that's new that I'm trying to pick up. It's just little things here and there. And that's exactly what you want to hear from a guy who has had to make the switch over to center. Um, he says he's comfortable with it. Look, I've played it before. Um, I really, this shouldn't be all that hard of a switch for me. It's just doing it at the NHL level. And I'm so glad the Flames have given him the opportunity to showcase what he can do at center um, at the NHL level. And he's been very, very good. Now, maybe his plus minus hasn't been fantastic, but with the Flames losing all these games, no one's plus minus has looked great. Think of a guy like Sharon Govich. He has the worst plus minus on the team, I believe, um, him or Huberdo. And both of them, you know, Sharon Govich more so, is, is pretty good defensively um, when it comes really down to it. It's just they're not given the best opportunity right now because the Flames' defensive core isn't all that great and they're letting in a lot of goals. It's also interesting to note that the Flames since the trade deadline have been so much worse when Jacob Markstrom is in net. Now, I'm not blaming Markstrom at all. but Dustin Wolf doesn't have all that bad of a record since the trade deadline. But anyway, let's continue about Zary here because it really does affect the Flames' future here. No matter what is decided on Zary, who has two goals, one assist, and has successfully swiped 51.4% of his draws in these past, spin past six spins, Conroy knows he needs more building blocks at this crucial position. 
Calgary's top two centers, Nazem Kadri and Michael Backlund, are 33 and 35, respectively. With both still performing at a high level, there's an opportunity for some on-the-job mentorship for the guys who will eventually push for more of their ice time. And that, of course, is alluding to Connor Zary. Trouble is, the Flames are thin on pivot prospects. Cole Schwint likely tops the list, and he projects as a bottom six sort. You've got to think Conroy will select a center with one of his two first-round picks in the 2024 NHL draft, but he'll need a little lottery luck to land a ready-to-go difference maker. Yeah, that pretty much goes again with what I was saying before. To get one of these elite guys that can come in right away, you know, the next potential Connor Bedard, Connor McDavid, um, Nathan McKinnon, Austin Matthews type, you need to really draft in the top three here and win some sort of part of the lottery, if not the whole thing. So hopefully the Flames will be able to do that and get a number one center of the future. But if they aren't able to do that and they have to switch their draft plans around, Connor Zary isn't the worst replacement, at least for next season. He's proven he can play there and it seems like he wants to play there, have more responsibility and really fit in the lineup as he has all year. Now let's just take look, take a look at one last thing here. If nothing else, this creates a good debate for the offseason. Center or wing, where is Zary's future with the Flames? It's been good so far, Zary said, of this ongoing audition, something that could continue into training camp in the fall. I like the idea of keeping my feet moving through the middle of the ice, especially with the systems we play. It's easy as a centerman to keep your feet moving and make plays. Well, geez, Connor, I didn't know it was easy. So easy to play center. Why haven't you been doing it before? No, but in all seriousness, where do you guys think Connor Zary should be? be positioned at in the future for the Flames? Do you think he should continue to try and be a center going into next season when the Flames might not be all that great of a team and continue this audition and hopefully get a full-time role as a center? Or do you think the Flames should just full-on say that no matter what, with their first pick in the draft, they should draft a center and Connor Zary can most likely end his career, at least his part with the Flames, as a winger, hopefully backing up and mentoring the next round of prospects. Either way, it is very exciting and it's fun to think about. No matter what, what decision is made will impact the Flames' future here. Now let's get into the draft lottery odds. We talk a lot about the draft and there are some updates. Um, there's only really one game left for most teams. A lot of teams have actually finished their season so far and are already golfing or are preparing for the playoffs. The Flames will be golfing very, very soon, with the, especially with the weather changing. Um, but let's take a look here. So... These are the inverse standing slash a lottery update. The Flames have the tiebreakers on the Kraken, but the Devils have the tiebreakers on the Flames. So you see right there, the Flames will either finish 8th or ninth, um, in terms of from the bottom. <laughs> um, so for the draft lottery odds, which will give them either a 6% chance or a 5% chance. Now, the team they're battling with, I guess you could call it a battle, is the Seattle Kraken. And like... Ryan Pike tweeted here, the Flames do have the tiebreaker over the Kraken. So let's now take a look at the actual standings here. Um, they both have one game to go, the Flames and Kraken. As you can see, they're both tied on 79 points, um, but the Flames, of course, have the tiebreaker. Now, both teams have one game left. The Kraken are in Minnesota for their last game, so not exactly guaranteed points or anything. And the Flames are hosting the worst team in the NHL, the San Jose Sharks now. The Sharks have literally nothing to play for. They are locked in at that bottom spot in the league. Um, so essentially, if the Flames, as long as they get less points than the Kraken in the final game of the season, then they will get that eighth bottom spot and have 1% chance higher of landing uh, or, or of winning the draft lottery. Um, but we will have to see. Now, a lot of people will say, please lose. We want to finish lower than Seattle. A 1% change isn't that big of a deal. And... It really won't matter all that much in the grand scheme of things that the Flames do win their last game or not. Hopefully, it's always nice to kind of end on a high and the players are feeling good and hopefully they've gained something out of the season, especially with all the experiments that the Flames have been doing. It's always nice to watch your team win and it's a good opportunity for them to win. That being said, losing also hasn't been bad for the past at least month or so here. So no matter what, the last game of the season is essentially meaningless, but the Flames will be picking eighth or ninth now let's get into the comment of the day and this one goes with the community post that i made yesterday of who is the biggest meme player in flames history and there are a lot there were some that were commented that didn't even come to my mind i forgot you know how great oli Okunin was and then all of a sudden he fell off 
um, and guys like Troy Brower. Now, that would be more what's the worst contract in Flames history, and you can throw in Brower and Neal and Lucic and them. Um, Brower really was supposed to be great and then wasn't at all. But a mean player really meant a guy who just was memed on like crazy. And I thought this comment really hit it on the head. But it has to be Butler, as in Chris Butler. He has the record for worst plus well, plus minus in one game for the Flames. He went minus seven against Boston. Yes, in one game, he went minus seven. And he really was a meme during his time in Calgary. I know he went on to win the cup with St. Louis, and that's great for him. But during his time in Calgary, anytime there was a mistake, oh, it must have been Chris Butler. Even for me personally, with some of my friends and family, you know, when we think of just literally the biggest meme of all time or the worst player, genuinely, I'm so sorry, Chris Butler, if you're watching, but he was the name mentioned. So I thought that was funny to bring up. And I'm really, thank you so much for interacting with that post. I thought it was a very, very fun one. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you like what you saw here today and have a wonderful rest of your day.